Good evening, everyone. I'm IC from 12E. Before we start, let me ask you a question. When is the last time you worried about where to get water and food? Well, my guess is that none of you ever have. When we open the tap, the water comes out. When we open the fridge, the food is just there. But do you know that in some other parts of the world, people are still struggling with these concepts day to day? Human needs collide with scarcity. Nowadays, a lot of natural resources are being overused and overdepleted, especially some non-renewable ones such as coal, oil, and water. Take an African country, Kenya, as an example. According to Joint Monitoring Program for Water Supply and Sanitation, only 58% of the Kenyans had access to at least basic drinking water sources in 2015. Almost half of them need to worry about where to get water to drink. But what causes the harsh relationship? When we think of water scarcity, we think of Sahara, the Middle East, we think of the climatic problems. But do you know that there are also some social problems presenting that causes the harsh relationships between people and the environment? Last summer, I went to Kenya with 10 of my friends to explore the water crisis there. We went to many slums, including Kibera, which is the biggest slum in Africa. Half of the population living there are in a condition that is far from the modern. The sanitation there is unimaginable. In Kenya, there are dry seasons and rainy seasons. During the dry seasons, the water is scarce. So people have to set up water collectors or walk a long way to get water from large rivers to overcome this. So the climate is definitely a main contributor to the lack of water in Africa. However, during the rainy seasons, we also have the water wasting problem and the water pollution. Kenya has very poor roads, so the government is always letting the workers to fix the roads or build new roads. When pumping the ground, the water leaks. Dust and the soil go into the water, causing the water pollution. So the polluted water is still transporting to the whole city, and the whole city will consume the polluted water. And also, in every local slum, there are several water vendors. They make their livings by selling water. But in order to reduce competitions, some of them start to cut other people's water pipes to prevent them getting their water source. So they can be the only water vendors that have the water and make more money. So not having the resources we need makes us less human, erodes our humanity. And for the polluted water, the people I met still don't know how to make it clean and safe to drink. I asked the people in the slums how did they drink water. They told me that if the water looked clean and transparent, they would directly drink it, no matter where it came from. So in this way, many water-related diseases happen. For example, cholera, typhoid. They are the most common diseases caused by drinking dirty water, with symptoms such as high fever, diarrhea occurring, leading to dehydration and eventually death. So the health problems caused by drinking dirty water also makes the relationship between people and the environment intense and harsh. And in this video, our guide is directly drinking the water from the tank as the water source without any filtration or purification. And then what we should consider is how to mitigate the situation. If we want to help, first we need to learn. We first conducted research to understand the situation. We interviewed the local NGOs, community members, government officials, and so on, trying to find out how could we help, even in a mild manner. And then we summarized our findings and published an article on the website called China Development Brief to raise the social awareness of the water crisis in Kenya. And also, in every local slum, we made a brochure, and the content was about how to make the clean drinking water. And my teammates and I also taught the children in the slum a lesson about how to make uh, about water security. We did an experiment, and the content was a, 
um, we did a experiment to let them to let the children realize that the seemingly clean water was actually not clean. We let a little drop of water hang in the top of syringe and then use a laser pointer to point at the water drop and the image would be on the wall. And the student could see that what uh, and the student could see that there were actually black spots moving around, which were the bacteria. And thus they could understand that what was making everyone so sick. And after that, they would start to boil the water or using the water guard to kill the bacteria in the water. And after the class, we also uploaded the video to YouTube so more people can see it and spread the knowledge to more children. My teammates also made a teaching booklet to direct the teachers to teach the young. Thus, people are treated water in the right way that prevents the conflict between people and the environment. For the water crisis year, I'm fully aware that what I could do to change the situation was minimal. However, I believe if everyone could understand the relationship between people and the environment, we can be the future change makers to solve the problems and to help more people. There are also many other environmental issues to be dealt with, for example, global warming, deforestation, overfishing, etc. It is the time for us to find a harmonious way to get along with the nature, to achieve a symbiotic relationship, and to develop sustainably. Thanks for listening.